In our last tutorial, we finished by looking at how we can use the curve warp to manipulate geometry, including mesh repro meshes. In this tutorial, we'll wrap up by adding color and emissive properties with Arnold to our scene, creating spotlights which track our dancer, and finally set our scene up for a final render using Arnold. Now it's time to finish our look development with Arnold. I have played to frame 50 so that we can see all of the elements in the scene. I just want to check something, so I'm going to tap the spacebar and go into my side view. And I can see that there is a mismatch between the ground plane and the particles in the studio. So I'm just going to fix that. I think it's the particles that are mainly at fault here. There could be a potential issue with my ground plane. So, with my Nucleus 1 object selected, I'm just going to switch off my ground plane. And because of the beauty of hindsight and the stability of the Maya M particle system, I have decided that I want the particles to interact with my studio object. I'm going to select the N rigid 2 object. And as we can see, that's already set to collide. And this N rigid 2 object was created when we made the studio a passive collider. I think this could be my problem in that the thickness is set to 1.193 rather than 0. So set that to 0. And if we play that again. That's fixed that. All the particles are now correctly interacting with the studio only. OK, so let's go back to frame 50 by step back one frame. Tap spacebar again and tap spacebar to go back into our camera view. Let's open the Arnold render view. Arnold, Arnold render view. And let's just go through some of the quick options at the top of the Arnold render view. We have the play button here, which is playing at the moment. So if you press that on and off, that starts a new live Arnold IPR session. We have this fan here, which automatically updates any change in the scene and restarts the rendering. And this little cog shows our basic settings for the scene. We can also adjust the exposure with this slider here. And we can cycle through our color channels by selecting this little icon here. But at the moment, we're not going to see anything because everything is gray. So we'll just keep that on RGB. We can choose our camera and also our render passes, our AOVs, if we had them set up. I can see that there is a difference in color between the oh, particles here and my dancer. I don't want that. So I need to change the voxel material for the PQ1 for voxels object. I'm just going to close the Arnold render view. One of the quickest ways to do this is to go to our display layers, so channel box display layers, switch on our maker objects, select our PQ1 for voxels. I'm just going to switch into the perspective view. Oh, we are zoomed in. Yeah, just make sure, and I can press the F key to zoom back in. And I'm going to right click on that assign existing material and I'm going to AI standard 2 underscore voxel and that should have adjusted. Remember one of the quickest ways to check what materials assigned to an object is to make sure that in the outliner display assign materials is checked and then we can see we now have AI standard 2 for voxel assigned. And we're just going to go back to our Arnold render view. Now, because I've got my Maker object switched on, you can see our Maker geometry here. But if I just reduce the window, in fact, let's just hide my display settings. And I'm just going to switch visibility off for the Maker objects. And there you go. The scene is updating correctly. And my particles and my dancer are now all the same material, which is exactly what I want. Everything is now the same uniform grey, but we want to change that, obviously. It is worth checking the Arnold user guides on the Solid Angle website to get the full details on how to work with Arnold materials. And these user guides are really straightforward, really easy to deep dive into, and are useful for both novice users and expert users and get updated regularly. But going back to our scene, 
first thing I'm going to do is make our type an emissive object. So I'm going to select, just move our render view over here. And in the outliner, I've selected our AI standard three underscore type. Let me just go to my attribute editor. I'm going to go down to our emission and set the scale to 0.5. And you can see it's starting to glow slightly, but I just want to make sure that that is emitting correctly. So I'm going to click on my dome light and put its intensity down to 0.5, just to make sure that we are getting a bit of glow from our lighting. Just reduce that down a little bit more to say 0.1. Yeah, and there we can see the glow from the dancing lighter, so that's great. So I'm going to put my sky dome light back up to one. Back in AI standard type three, I'm going to, in my color, click on that and I'm going to add a standard snow texture and I'm going to make my surface color quite an intense cyan there we go and again yeah we can see the cyan is emitting onto the ground plane we can now create the material for the dancer and I want them to appear as yellow plastic so I am going to click on the select tool select our object Select your material, AI standard two for Foxhall, and just go in and I'm going to add a yellow into the diffuse color. It is always best practice if you want your materials to be physically correct to make sure that the weight in the diffuse color and in the specular weight never add up to more than one. Now, normally I wouldn't add a color into the specular unless I was going to create a material like a gold or a brass, but in this case, I'm going to make an exception because it's more fun this way. Just make that a light yellow. No, I think I might make that more of an orange. And set the weight to 0.4 and keep my weight in the diffuse to 0.6. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to reduce the roughness of my specular a little bit, just to start to bring out. In fact, I might just take that all the way down and starting to see it's picking up some of the reflection from the dancer. I might just increase my diffuse to 0.8 and just keep my weight back down to 0.2. Okay, I'm happy with that as a base material for my dancer for now. And now I just want to select my studio in the Arnold render view and set the AI standard one studio. And I'm gonna choose a dark blue for that. And my diffuse. And just going to add a bit of cyan again into the specular. So select my dancer again and a standard two for Vauxhall. As you can see, uh, using the outliner to choose the materials like this is so much quicker for this kind of work, especially when working with the Arnold render view. And I'm just going to lose, I think that's maybe too much reflection. So I'm just going to re-add some roughness. Yeah, and for now, that will do. So on the whole, I'm pretty happy with how this scene is starting to look, but my dancer still isn't very distinctive and is a bit dull and not being pulled out of the scene. So to fix that, I'm gonna add some spotlights. So I'm just gonna close my Arnold render view for now, and I'm in the rendering tab, and I'm gonna add three spotlights. So one, two, three. And you can see the spotlights are just here in the viewport. So to get a better idea of my placement, I'm just going to switch my view into perspective. I'm going to switch my shading to smooth shade all. I'm going to switch on use all lights. And then if I move one of these, you can see we have interactive lighting, which is brilliant. I'm just going to press my spacebar and in my side view, I can see the spotlights here. So shift select, W, and let's just move them so that they're above the dancer. And then in the channel box, 
I am going to using my middle mouse button rotate an X to minus 90 and I'll just use the keyboard to zero that out that's great and now with my first spotlight I'm going to move that to the beginning and with my third spotlight I'm just going to move that to the end but so I'll just let that animation play through so I know where my end is okay so now that I'm through at the end just pan that over using the third spotlight there's also zoom in and plan view and we just move that down and there we go just going to move the other thing I'm going to do is just make sure all the spotlights are slightly in front of the dancer as well. Spotlight 2. And Spotlight 3. Move that back to the beginning. Yeah, that's fine where it is. In fact, I might just move Spotlight 2 a bit further so that, yeah, in the middle of the animation there is a direct spotlight over him. That's great. And the other thing that's worth noting is that the colour elements that we added with our Arnold uh, materials earlier are now all reflected in our scene objects. So that's fantastic. So I'm just going to hit the spacebar again and switch back to camera one. We can now get the spotlights to track our dancer. Uh, to do this, so first of all, I'm just going to switch off my visibility of my particles just so that we can get some good playback and not have the particles in the way that's great so what we need to do is we need to create a locator of which the spotlights will all track to so we go to create menu and locator and I'm just going to rename this light underscore locator it's great and just as we did with the camera aim locator to open my dance one reference, dance one spine, and then middle mouse button that into dance one spine one, and then in our channel box, just zero everything out. So that's locator is now tracked to the dancer. Okay, let's move that forward a bit so we can see our dancer. There we go. So now we just need to constrain each of the lights to that locator. So to do that, I'm going to go to the rigging menu and with my light locator selected, I am going to command select my spotlight two, just because that's the center one for just now. I'm going to go to constrain, aim constrain, and I'm just going to select on the options. And I'm going to make sure that my aim vector is set to zero zero minus one to make sure that the camera is facing down and I'm going to click on add and now if we scrub yep spotlight is now tracking which is awesome and really really straightforward and simple so we'll just do that for our other two spotlights so select our light locator command select spotlight one constrain aim select our options add that's great and scrub back and forth yep tracking 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 spotlight three oh light locator first then spotlight three constrain and aim and I'm pretty sure yet yeah, values will just carry through from the previous two so there we go and again viewport 2.0 making it really nice and simple to see what our spotlights are doing So now we want to see what our spotlights are actually doing in our Arnold render view. So let's just open Arnold render view. And as we can see, they are not doing much of anything. That is because we haven't adjusted the settings of the spotlights to work nicely with Arnold. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this handy little menu up here uh, called the light editor. So I can go through here and this just gives a simplified view of each of the main settings of our lights and allows us 
to just access them quickly without having to go to the outliner and go to the attribute editor. So let's just pull that so we can see our names. So for Spotlight 2, which is our center one, I'm going to really pump up the intensity on this one, say to 2000. There we go. And you can see we've got the beginnings of our light disk there. So I'm going to do that for the other two as well. What I might do is just increase the, just on the center one, just maybe pump that up a little bit more to give it a really dramatic center light just for that center. Yeah, that's much better. So as the dancer would come back through, just update our scene further away and then in the center under update full scene. Yeah, we'll get stronger as that as the dancer moves more into our center light. I just want to check a couple of the more subtle features within our lights. So let's just come say back to just see where we are. Yeah, that's good. Update full scene. Okay. There's a dramatic shot. That's great. So just with our first spotlight selected in the attribute editor, I might just increase our penumbra angle by 10, just to give it a bit more of a fall off. In fact, I'll do that for all three. Again, just using light editor now to... Actually, I'm going to keep that one a bit sharper, so I might only do that to 5. Gives us more of a dramatic, realistic edge. Spotlight 3, penumbra angle 15. And in fact, I'm just going to really pump up, and this time I'll just use the attribute editor, really pump up that center spotlight. Yeah, that's great. That's looking really good. Of course, we are missing our particles here, so I'm just going to switch those back on. There we go. There's our particles back on, and we've just cashed through to a good frame, and we're starting to see, yeah, the spotlights are picking out the front highlights. And in fact, if we want to go absolutely crazy, let's just see what happens if we put that up to 10,000. Because of the robustness of the Arnold GI system, you can keep on pushing the intensity of the lights up to absolutely crazy levels, which dependent on the aesthetic that you're trying to achieve with your scene is always really handy. And naturally we can just use this if we wanted to, to add little bits of color. So maybe you would want to add a little bit of the matching cyan into the two side spotlights. But again, all these are creative decisions which are up to you to do as you see fit when you're going through this tutorial. And as you can see with tools like the light editor, it's dead easy to do. Right, great. Everything is now as I would like it with the scene. My type is dancing, my particles are here, uh, my dancers here and our lights are working really well, especially with this lovely fall off now that we're getting with the Arnold render system. So it's now time to render. Uh, there's a couple of things that I need to set up and check. So first of all, I just want to make sure in my Windows settings preferences, preferences in my color management, that apply output transform to render is not switched on. You'd only ever need this if you're sending straight to an image that isn't going to be composited. But in this case, I want to put this image into After Effects and play with it a little bit. So that's great. That's not ticked on. And in my render settings, just make sure all the common settings are there, so my image format's EXR, that's great. Compression, zip, find that works best. Metadata type, name, underscore, hash for my animation frames with a frame padding of four, that's the number of zeros. Start frame one, end frame 260, and skipping by a frame, that's great. Renderable camera, camera one, that's what we want. And again, this is quite useful. You don't get this in Cinema 4D. I can choose any one of my four views as well as my perspective view which would be the default camera in Cinema 4D um, as, a cam as a render camera so that's useful to have but we want our camera one to be the renderable camera 
HD 1080, that's fine, and everything else is okay. In my Arnold system, the only thing I really need to change, which is one of the reasons why Arnold is so great, is my camera AA. Here it's set to 4, which has been okay for preview, but if for a final render I would want to set that to at least 6, so I'm going to set that to 8. Um, and again, there might be an idea to run at a test frame now, just to make sure that you're happy with the settings and also to give you an idea of how long the render animation sequence will take and therefore you can define if you want to run it on your machine or maybe send it out to a render farm and other than that I'm happy with all those settings I'm not going to use any AOVs for this specific job I'm just going to have the dynamic range available within my EXRs and all we have to do now is set up a render we go to our rendering menu and we go to render render sequence and we're away we now have a groovy voxelized dynamic dancer which we created using a wide range of integrated tools within Maya 2017 this would only be possible in Cinema 4D if we were using uh, expensive third party plugins I hope you can see that the advantages of having a unified system in Maya which now encompasses MASH, Arnold and Maya's existing powerful particle and dynamic systems makes creating complex dynamic animations like this incredibly straightforward my name is Mike Griggs and I look forward to seeing you in our next tutorial series.